Rice is an important food source in the South American nation of Chile. According to Cornell University, Chileans each eat about 22 pounds of it per year, and about half of that is produced right here. Rice is usually grown in paddies, flooded fields. The water helps regulate the temperature and keep weeds away. But Chile has been in a 15-year drought, so engineers are searching for a solution. They crossbred a Chilean rice seed with one from Russia, which was better suited to colder and drier climates. And they utilized an alternative method of growing it that spaces the seedlings farther apart and waters them intermittently instead of flooding them. Those methods seem to be working, and one grower found that each seed is yielding almost 10 times the plants than what's seen in a typical rice paddy. The new seed and the new method are still being studied, and we don't know if the taste and texture are the same, which could affect whether people want to eat it. But the seed now has government support for commercial production, and the grower that saw success with it believes it'll help with food security and protecting the environment. Welcome to the world from A to Z. My name is Carl Azus, thankful to be with you this Thursday. The world's forests have been described as the lungs of the planet, and scientists have a new tool to see how well they're breathing. Here's what's going on. The European Space Agency launched a new satellite called the Biomass Satellite earlier this week. If all goes according to plan, it'll orbit the Earth for five years and use a radar scanner to gather information from forests in South America, Africa, and Asia. ESA officials say the instrument's capable of seeing through the canopy down to the forest floor, and they're hopeful this will help them understand how much carbon these lush landscapes capture. Carbon dioxide is necessary for the survival of plants and animals, but too much of it pollutes the air, and scientists say it can trap heat, causing temperatures to rise and a slew of problems for the environment. Forests are believed to absorb around 8 billion tons of CO2 each year, but deforestation and deterioration could hurt their ability to do this. So the biomass space mission, at an estimated cost of $500 million, aims to scan through some of the planet's 1.5 trillion trees and assess the fresh air they provide. Word and knowledge. Which of these hormones is associated with feelings of reward? Dopamine, cortisol, melatonin, norepinephrine. A neurotransmitter and hormone that helps us learn, focus, and feel rewarded is dopamine. If your to-do list keeps getting longer, but the motivation to get things done is in short demand, you're not alone. And experts say a dopamine menu or dopamenu may be just what you need. It's a personalized list of activities that can bring you relaxation, relief, and reward. Dr. Sanjay Gupta says dopamine is a neurotransmitter and a key part of our brain's reward system. He says it's critical for decision-making, planning, and the ability to pay attention. If you can trigger your brain and access that dopamine, it can help you focus. To design your own dopamine, you Gupta says to write down a list of activities you can turn to before it's needed. They should be reasonable to do and ones you personally enjoy. Consider ones that involve mindful movement, like a short walk, a one-song dance party, or a bike ride. You can also consider creative outlets like writing, social connections such as taking a break to see a friend, or rest and recovery like a short nap or soothing bath. Organize your menu the way a restaurant does. Appetizers are small breaks. Main dishes take a bit longer, and desserts are more indulgent. Just remember, have fun with it. I'm Mandy Gaither. On this date in world history, all aboard, Amtrak began operating across the U.S. on May 1, 1971. The railway company, which received some funding from the federal government, took over inner city rail services which had been shared by private companies. Amtrak now serves over 500 cities in 46 states and the District of Columbia. Achtung, baby! The U2 incident began on May 1, 1960, but had nothing to do with the band. 
Cold War tensions flared when the Soviet Union shot down an American spy plane in Soviet airspace and captured pilot Gary Powers, who dejected. Proof of U.S. reconnaissance missions over the Soviet Union led to the collapse of an international conference involving the two countries and others. Powers was convicted of spying but was freed by the Soviet Union in a prisoner swap with the U.S. in 1962. And New York's Empire State Building was dedicated on this date in 1931. President Herbert Hoover turned on the building's lights from his desk in the White House. The 102-story Art Deco building was the tallest in the world at that time. Where in the world? This nation was home to several ancient civilizations before it was colonized by Europeans in the 16th century. In the early 1800s, it fought Spain for independence and achieved it in 1821. It's the third largest country on the North American continent. This is Mexico, a nation of more than 130 million people. Just outside of Mexico City, farmers have relied on a very old farming method, one that's now in danger of disappearing. It's called Chinampa. A Chinampa is a small island, so to speak, that was initially created with organic matter. Layers of dredged soil are built up over a lake, held together by tall, thin willow trees planted around the perimeter, which creates a floating farmland. But now, urban areas are encroaching on the farms. Other types of urbanizations came, most recently intensive tourism, bringing many people, crowding sites, and making a lot of noise and generating a lot of garbage. The town Xochimilco has over 2,500 acres of farmland, but not much is actually being farmed these days. Chinampa farming has been largely abandoned, especially by young people because it is not so profitable. And in reality, many of the Chinampa farmers continue to farm because they love it, not because of its profitability. Some farmers have turned to renting out the Chinampas for non-farming uses, like soccer fields, while others have sold the floating land for more lucrative ventures. But a few, like Cassandra Garduño, want to continue to farm in order to preserve the ancient Chinampa practice. If we want to conserve this area for what it is or how it is, then it has to be used for what it is designed for, which is to farm. The more demand for housing there is and the more, let's say, incentive towards tourism there is, we'll see fewer spaces for farming. She was inspired by her grandfather, who was a Chinampa farmer. I hope that in 20 or 30 years, we can flip the coin and have areas that really work for agriculture and conservation. I have a lot of faith in this because that's how the Chinampa started. The Chinampa is literally, in essence, made by humans to take care of its ecosystem. Garduño is a part of an initiative called Chinampa Refuge, where she encourages other farmers to keep up their hard work. Today's World of Viewers takes us to Europe. Got a request from Spain the other day where Mrs. Sanchez's class is watching from Aquinas American School. In the Spanish capital of Madrid, we're excited to see the bears. Sailing across the Atlantic, we encounter some pirates in North Carolina. Mr. Deshomes or Deshomes class. Great to see y'all at Chase Middle School in Forest City, part of the Tar Heel State. And in Tennessee, Mr. Clayman's class is online. Hello to the tribe at Dobbins Bennett High School. It's in the Volunteer State and the city of Kingsport. Watch zookeepers go to great and creative lengths to prevent a wild animal from getting used to their domesticated surroundings. The bird on the right is a rare baby king vulture, the first born at the Bronx Zoo since the 1990s. The bird on the left is no bird at all. It's an ornate hand puppet, handcrafted by the zoo's art department and worn by zookeepers to feed the hatchling in order to prevent it from imprinting on humans. It's a unique technique that's been used for decades by zoos when dealing with critically endangered species such as vultures and condors to ensure a healthy rearing of the fragile birds while keeping them as wild and undomesticated as possible.
Of course, there might be a little drama when it vultures out for a bite to eat and realizes mealtime still leaves it wildly hungry for a puppet show with no strings attached. It might raise a hand when there is no show of hands and it doesn't get a hand for biting the hand that feeds it and simply say, I need a hand, so sock it to me. I'm Carl Azus for the world from A to Z, and it means the world to have you watching.